Road to Nowhere While businesses in several sectors pivot their operations to stay afloat, the travel industry needs to venture further while being very much grounded. By Susan Muldowney Key takeaways from this audio article 1. Tourism is in dire straits, with international travel not expected to return to normal until 2024 and more than 197 million jobs in jeopardy. 2. While industry experts are confident in people's desire to travel after a prolonged lockdown, there are also concerns that insufficient funds might prove to be a constraint. And 3. Amid the challenges, travel businesses are making use of opportunities to evolve their product offering using technology such as virtual reality. If it were any other year, there is a good chance you would be gearing up for your annual holiday right about now. You might be heading to another part of the country to be with family or flying overseas for a longer break. However, 2020 has been a year like no other, and for most of us, travel plans are officially on hold. The COVID-19 pandemic has created a global health and economic crisis, unprecedented for most of us. And, while no industry has been immune to its impact, few have been hit as hard as the travel sector. Many businesses in the sectors most exposed to COVID-19, such as hospitality, have been able to adjust their model to continue trading at some level. For the travel industry, however, there is barely a product left to sell. Research from the World Travel and Tourism Council estimates that prolonged pandemic restrictions could jeopardize more than 197 million jobs in the sector and wipe more than $5.5 trillion US from global GDP. Meanwhile, the International Air Transport Association predicts that global passenger traffic will not return to pre-COVID-19 levels until 2024. This is a year later than previously projected. While countries like Greece and Spain reopened their borders to tourists in the middle of the year, many others, including Australia and New Zealand, remain closed to international travellers. In Australia, citizens are prohibited from leaving the country without an exemption from the Department of Home Affairs. Meanwhile, tourism hotspot the Northern Territory announced in August it will remain closed for at least another 18 months to protect its vulnerable remote Indigenous population. Businesses of all sizes have been hit hard, from small and medium-sized tourism operators and travel agents to some of the country's largest industry players. Qantas, Crown Resorts and Travel Agents, Flight Centre, Webjet and Hello World have laid off thousands of employees and have been forced to raise capital or take on debt to survive the pandemic. Meanwhile, Virgin Australia collapsed into administration with $6.8 billion Australian dollars in debt. Sam Rotberg, FCPA, director at small business advisory firm Alexander Spencer in Victoria, specialises in several industries, including travel. He says the only thing that travel agents have to sell right now is a future dream. There are people who are still buying that future dream, but there aren't too many of them, he says. Even before domestic borders closed, Travel agents weren't making that much money because there's just not enough commission on domestic travel compared to travel to places like Europe. I have a client who specializes in selling international and local tours to schools, and they have enough reserves to nut it out for another 12 months to see how things improve, Rotberg says. For most of my other clients, I don't know if they will actually survive another three or six months. Rotberg says that a trans-Tasman travel bubble between Australia and New Zealand would do little to lift the prospects of many travel agents. You need to sell a certain volume of flights before you receive an override commission on top of the usual international flight commission, which is about 10%, he says. These override commissions help to keep a lot of travel agents' heads above water, but those kinds of volumes are a long way off. It is not only travel agents who are feeling the impact of COVID-19 restrictions. Daniela Marsh, CPA, principal at GCG Accountants in Cairns, says the pandemic is testing the endurance of the region's entire tourism sector like never before. 
Marsh's clients include Great Barrier Reef tour operators, accommodation sites, and car hire businesses. She says tourism numbers lifted from close to zero in April to about 10% of normal figures in June. When the second wave of infections hit the state of Victoria, the Queensland border was swiftly slammed shut and Marsh's clients experienced another overnight decrease in business. Shutting the border pretty much cut the tourism numbers back to nothing, she says. Along with assisting clients with compliance obligations and providing a sounding board for their business concerns, Marsh has been helping them navigate the federal government's JobKeeper stimulus package, with Cairns recording the highest number of JobKeeper recipients in Queensland. Most of my clients are holding out to see what happens when the stimulus package stops, she says. Things are changing from month to month, and the uncertainty is making it so tough. The pandemic has also put the brakes on a promising emerging branch of tourism, important to developing countries such as Malaysia. Prior to the pandemic, the global medical tourism sector was predicted to generate $38 billion by 2024, as people travelled to undergo treatment in locations where medical procedures were more affordable or of a higher standard. In Malaysia, the medical tourism sector recorded a compound annual growth rate of 16% to 17% over the past five years. This is well ahead of the global average of 10% to 12% and Asia-Pacific's average of 12% to 14%. Its growth has been fueled by the relative affordability of medical procedures and the high quality of healthcare facilities and services in the multilingual nation. There has also been a government policy push to promote the country as a medical tourism destination under the Malaysia Healthcare brand. In 2018, Malaysia attracted 1.2 million medical tourists who underwent procedures ranging from knee reconstruction to heart surgery. Indonesia, the UK, India, the Philippines, China, Singapore, Australia, Japan and the US were among the main sources of medical tourism arrivals in the country, generating revenue of approximately $495 million. Peter Hong, FCPA, Managing Director of Ramsey Syme Derby Healthcare, which operates six hospitals in Malaysia and Indonesia, says that the Malaysian government is aiming to, where possible, boost medical tourism during the pandemic. As of the 1st of July, We started to open a small door for people with a chronic condition who could fly into Malaysia, he says. But, even still, they will be quarantined for 14 days. Even local patients must do a COVID test, primarily because we want to protect our doctors. If a doctor gets sick, the whole team is down, and in smaller hospitals, we don't have that many teams. With only a slim opportunity for international medical tourists to get into the country, Hong says that Malaysian hospitals are focusing on local medical tourism.